So as you can see, I've already started my technique on the underneath part of the hair. Texas is also Arizona. All right. Kansas. Hey, everyone. So great that of you to join us today. Um, as you can, can see, I started our technique on the underneath part of the hair. Uh, I'm going to go right back into the section that I was already on. I started by just taking um, one to two inch second sections, depending on the density of the hair. And then I'm picking up and uh, balayaging the curls curl by curl. So you'll see that um, she is actually, this is a unicorn of a, an adult who has virgin hair. So she likes a low maintenance style, so we're giving her balayage that will grow out seamlessly. Um, as you can see, I've got some of my balayage coming up higher, and then I've also got some that's starting out lower. And the more erratic diffusion that you have in the hair, the more natural it's going to be. Um, the product that I'm using is our clay decolorizer. So if you're not already using clay decolorizer for balayage, this is an incredible tool by Lanza that we have to give you some really great balayage opportunities. Um, and then inside all of our color and decolorizer, not only with Lanza, but can be intermixed with other brands, we have our trauma treatment. So in our 30 gram formula of decolorizer or color, we can add about one pump or five grams of trauma treatment to keep the hair healthy and protected while we're coloring the hair. Um, in the bowl, we have mixed uh, our clay colorizer, we can mix in a one-to-one -one ratio. We can also mix it in a one-to-two ratio, or one-to-one point five would be sufficient as well. Um, when we're mixing our product together, we want to make sure that we are using what we need to use for the hair type or the technique that we're doing. So in this case, because we're doing open air and because um, we're working curl by curl. I did a one-to-one -one ratio, mixing ratio. So one part um, clay decolorizer, and then I started with um, 20 volume developer, and then I remixed and switched to 30 since I will be working my speed up towards the top. So um, in addition to that, with curly hair, we need to make sure that we are protecting the hair and the moisture levels while we're decolorizing. Um, as many people are familiar or have heard, a lot of clients are color shy or decolorizer shy because they don't want it to disrupt the curl pattern. Um, there's a myth out there that uh, any type of chemical on the hair will is not good for curly hair. And I think that um, it is true that you want to, don't want to over process or damage curly hair because it can disrupt the curl pattern. But when you have a brand that has your back like Lanza does and provides you all the tools and all the treatments to maintain the integrity of the hair, it's nothing to worry about. As you can see, I have decolorizer on my hair and my curls are still intact and I do have a really dry, coarse texture of hair. Um, so if my hair can take it, a lot of other curly hair can take it as well. We just need to be very mindful of not over-processing the hair because if you overprocess curly hair, it can get more frizzy. It can disrupt the curl pattern. So just make sure you're using the products. Um, everything that I've listed here on our products between our trauma treatment and also our healing blonde pre-treatment, uh, blonde boost pre-treatment, let me get that out. Um, they can be intermixed and used with your current brand if you're not already a Lanza user. We hope that you are, but if you're not, you can still use this as well. So um, you can spray this on directly before you put decolorizer on the hair. And what it's going to do is to strengthen uh, the hair and protect the hair, especially when it comes to any of our decolorizing bleaching agents. So what we're gonna do is spray this on each section, and then as we spray that on, we can do our balayage technique right over the top. Are there any questions so far? If you have questions, please type them in the chat, and the girls, well, 
not the girls, Mandy and Michael will make sure to get those questions to me. Um, so our tools also, I'm using our Lanza brush. It is, uh, has a soft end, if you can see that. Um, they're not really blunt, so it's great for balayage. Our silver brushes are going to be your balayage brushes with the softer ends, and our black brushes are going to be more blunt. So sometimes if we're doing like a color retouch, this might not be the best option, but when you're doing balayage, I really like to have the soft bristle to help me to blend my color really well. Um, when I'm taking my next section down, again, I started with um, horizontal sections around the hair. Um, I do kind of swoop down around the hairline so I can make sure to address the hairline as I need to. Um, with a lot of what we're taught, we need to make sure that we have really clean sections. Now with curly hair, it's a really different story. We don't wanna disrupt the curls and break apart the curls. So I will, if maybe if you can come in here, I will um, go ahead and just pull curls down. And again, I'll kind of horseshoe it around the head and I will pull pieces down that are in the curl pattern still, so that can make my section. I'm not going to worry about um, combing through and making an exact clean parting. I'm going to let the curls stay in their natural fall, if you will, or in their, in their curl pattern that they are already formed in. So another reason why it's important for the guests to come with their hair styled so that you can definitely see where those curls are formed together. If they are coming out of a messy bun, it's not going to be as easy to um, do this technique on. You may need to shampoo and style the hair first before you get started um, to do that. So again, I'm going to pick up some sections. Um, when I do my technique, I'm going to use over direction where I need to in order to paint on a smooth surface. So right over here, um, another important thing is having a really like clean brush or a clean amount of product. We don't want to have like massive over um, buildup of product on there or we'll lose, lose control. Um, when I'm working towards the top, I usually tend to go closer to the face in the front and further away, I'm sorry, closer to the scalp at the front and further away towards the back. Um, but I do like to go ahead and paint on to my section um, and then I will use a finger to blend or blur. And I'm going to paint all the way around. And then I like to use my hand really softly and then in between my pinky and my ring finger to very gently pull the color down the hair strand. So when we're using clay to colorizer, if we want it to be bright, we have to make it white. So as you can see down here, all of my sections that are previously done, they are very saturated and then um, as you can see up here, I've got, I'm like riding the ridge of some of my section, but leaving some dark underneath. Okay. And then I will take my, usually my middle finger or my pinky finger and blend that together because I have a really soft touch with those um, fingers. If I need a little bit more control, I might use my pointer finger as well and then let that drop. So I will alternate um, varying degrees of how close I go to the root area and keeping it further on the ends. So if I have one going up close, I might take another one down here and do more of the ends. When I'm doing smaller sections or closer to the ends, I will sometimes paint the hair on first and then use my, again, between my pinky and my ring finger 
and I'll use that with the perfect amount of tension to just gently zhuzh the color up. So as you can see, I've been doing two different techniques here. Sometimes I'm using over direction and riding the ridge of the section, and then sometimes I'm working from the ends and blurring up depending on what I'm going for in that section. Um, when I'm painting onto my hand, I try to keep my fingers pretty clean um, so I can pick up the hair. I'll also use the clean end of my brush to pick up a curl. Um, once I figure out where I want that curl, I can grab it and separate it that way. Okay? So here, I'm going to go up a little higher on this one. Again, I'm going to hold with tension towards the top. I'll kind of ride the ridge of the hair strand. And then I'll get in there and use my finger to blur or blend that section. If I'm at a point where I don't have enough control with my finger, we have our Lanza sponge set, which I love to use um, dampened to go in and I'll use different sides of it and give it a really great blend that way and uh, continue on with my saturation towards the ends. So I'm doing a lighter touch and less product like diffuse for the top and then I'm saturating the ends and again making them white so they can get bright. Are there any questions so far? And then drop that section down. Okay, next section here. So this one I'm kind of saturating the end a little more and then using my pinky and my ring finger to blend up. and dropping that down. When I have smaller sections like this, even if I'm going up higher, I will usually use the technique where I saturate and blend. It's just faster and easier, um, and it's gonna give you a different look. The thicker the sections that you're working with, the more, um, you need to consider riding the ridge and diffusing at the top. The smaller the sections they are, you can definitely um, start at the bottom and blend your way up. Um, around the face, I like to make sure that I am catching those hairs with a purpose. So again, I'll stick with curls that are clumping together. Here, I'll pull with tension. I'll do a little over directing and I will kind of ride the ridge of this. Paint it closer up toward her face. Take a clean finger and blend and then work my way down saturating the ends. And we are still going to leave some of her natural hair out, um, but she will have a lot of dimension because of the amount of hair that's left out here. So um, we will be working and leaving some negative space, and then obviously we have our highlights in there as well, our balayage. So I'm gonna turn her around and start working on the other side I missed this blonde. Oh, sorry. No, you're <laughs> it's so good you can eat it. No, really, don't eat it. But Sally Lemon might not complain. She loves this stuff. Okay. So, again, we're going to take our section. We're going to paint up. Um, you can just paint up on one side or you can paint all the way around. 
I like to have one side higher. I think it makes for the most natural um, grow out and the natural blend and keeps it looking very, very um, soft and subtle. And then work down towards a strong decolorized end. So here I've got this hair that's kind of not reaching in there. I'll just, again, use my comb and kind of push that out of the way and address that area separately. So again, I'm using tension just for the top part of my section. So again, if you look and see the other side, I've got some um, natural hair not colored on the other side. Um, kind of blend that a little bit there and saturate ends. So we're leaving some of her natural out and just continuing to work around the head. Again, I usually work from the hairline to the back, but it's very much like a freestyle, you know, technique where you have a lot of freedom to move around as you wish. And it's also very, very visual. So you can see when I'm looking at what I've done so far, you can see where I need to have, where I haven't worked versus where I have. And you can definitely pick up the pieces in between to make sure you're getting everything that you need to be colored, colored. If you see that you um, have more dark than you want, like say in this area here, you can always pick up some ends and just paint kind of down on the ends of, of that. And then it's giving you another like varying degree of like erratic diffusion as far as where the color um, starts. Pieces. I'm painting, kind of riding the ridge of the collar or of the strand, painting on, using my finger to melt that color, and then saturating ends. So there are a lot of other techniques that we can use as well. Um, this is one that I use on my guests, again, if you're just tuning in, that have curly, naturally curly hair and wear their hair curly all the time. If she were to straighten it out, she would still have soft, diffused hair. But um, depending on how much she wears it straight versus how much she wears it curly, I may choose a different, I may choose a different um, technique if she's wearing it straight a lot. Um, I use this mostly when they're always wearing their hair curly. We have a question. Yeah, absolutely. How long does this usually take to complete a full head? Um, it depends. Normally, um, when I'm working at salon speed, I can usually get her color applied at 45 minutes, about 45 minutes, um, sometimes 45 minutes to an hour, depending on the amount of hair they have, um, the amount of lightness we have. Um, it's not common that I get someone come in with virgin hair where there's no color on the ends. So I have to address a little bit more when I have no color on the ends as far as how much color I'm applying to the hair um, than when someone comes in with previous color. It obviously goes a little bit quicker. Um, I'll show you a piece like if I'm retouching the hair, um, grab a piece of hair here. Um, if I'm retouching something and the color is down here, um, I don't want to take it all the way to the top, but um, this is where um, my hands aren't going to be as messy because I'm not going to be pulling through the ends, uh, but I'll be using more of this type of technique and using a lot of my finger to diffuse or 
again, my Lanza sponge, where I can kind of get in there and diffuse that and still have my brightness on my retouch area melting into the ends. Um, I may, if I already have color on here, I may mix up two separate decolorizers. Maybe I have play with Demi to go over top of some of the ends that need a little refresh. Um, or I might just have my decolorizer um, on a retouched area on some sections as well. Does that answer your question? We have another question. Sure. Would you consider this form of hair painting? Yes, absolutely. I would consider it a form of hair painting. Um, we're freehand painting the hair and balayaging. Um, it's definitely a, more of a freestyle uh, visual application and it's not so much a, um, there's definitely foundations and structure within the hair. Um, there's definitely lines, but I'm not taking like super clean sections. I'm using more of what we would consider natural fall when it comes to um, where the hair lies naturally. With curly hair, it's never gonna fall in line in a straight line. So we, it, it's best in my personal opinion and experience to work with the hair where it, where it falls, where it lives, how it lives. So I have them come in again with their hair already styled the way that they style it, and then I work off of that curl pattern. Because if I can always come in and style it for them if they haven't, but I like for them to style it themselves because they, when they style their own hair, it's gonna look a little bit different than when I style it. And since they're the one who's styling their hair every day, even though they ask me to do it, they're styling their hair every day and I'm usually only styling it for special occasions or when they come in for their appointments. So we want that hair to um, be in the, in the shape that it is when they're styling it themselves. So again, when I'm taking my next section down, I'm just taking it down, using my finger. I rarely will ever get a comb out when it comes to curly hair for both um, cutting, if I'm doing dry cutting, and also for color. Um, the more we're coming through it, the more we're breaking up the curls and getting it out of its curl pattern. So you can see on her section, I have a general like section that's, um, you can tell it's still sectioned out. I'm still working with intention. But if you zoom in closer, you'll see that sometimes there's some irregularities in the sectioning, like not a clean part. That zigzag is just gonna help keep things soft and natural looking. So we can definitely not worry about that parting being precise and clean. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, I'm gonna show you another section just right close to the front. Um, and then I also want to share with you some of my favorite styling tips for curly hair, since that's an area where a lot of people do have some struggles. Um, I find that when you're styling curly hair, um, it is best to start with the hair super, super wet. Um, and always, curly hair always needs moisture. So we always start by using moisturizing products um, like a leave-in treatment, like trauma treatment, is one that I use on most of my curly hair guests. Um, when I'm using trauma treatment, I usually use that as a first step treatment, put that moisture on the hair, and then I will layer my other products on top. But putting that on super wet hair is going to help me get the moisture that I need for that curly hair. And once I have that moisture in the hair, I can seal it in with other products with hold in it. Um, but sometimes I tell my clients even to put the product on the trauma treatment while they're still in the shower. Um, then you can rinse your neck off, lift the hair, rinse the neck off, and make sure that you are getting all of the benefits of the product. You can still rake your fingers through it but then you can also um, 
re-wet it if it needs a little bit more saturation to give you a really great finish without frizz. The more we come through the hair again, whether we're coloring it, styling it, cutting it, the more we come through it, the more we're getting um, frizz and separation of curl. And curly hair, like I said, loves moisture. So the best way to not make the hair frizz is by adding the moisture to the hair. Once the hair is already moisturized, it's not going to try to absorb as much moisture from the outside, um, like humidity. And so it will get less frizz that way as well. I do have a PowerPoint with some of my um, favorite curly hair styling products. I will post that on this post after I finish so that, that you can take that away with you and um, be able to recommend those products to your guests. Um, also, if you are a curly hair, not a stylist, but a user um, of all the curly products, I will make sure that that is posted so you know where you are able to get those products and what they are. Um, also, I want to share with you that we are going to be um, having a dedicated curly hair stage at the Lanza Big Event. And if it's something where you definitely want to see more information, you can join us at the big event. If you're not, not already a Lanza user and not already aware, our big event is a, an event, an educational event. It's a fantastic educational event where our artistic design team, our creative directors, and also some of our other healing artists will be there to share all the newest, latest, greatest um, techniques, tips, and um, tricks in order to give you some phenomenal ideas and results. And we have that coming up in February, um, February 20th to 22nd. It's in Las Vegas at the brand new Resort World um, Resort. And I think while we're there, there's, I think Luke Bryan has residency there. So <laughs> you can catch some other shows too while you're there, but um, definitely come and see us for more curly hair um, tips, tricks, and techniques, as well as um, something for everyone. We will have education on business, on cutting, on coloring, everything that you could need behind the chair and for your salon. And we hope to see you there. I hope that you guys learned something today. If you did learn something, give me some love with some hearts or some likes. Um, if you have any other questions, you can definitely reach out to us um, you can put it in the chat on this post and we'll circle back around. You can also hit me up on social media. I'm Jody Vasilio on Facebook. I'll spell it J-O-D-I-V-A-S-I-L-I-O-U. That's also my Instagram handle, Jody Vasilio. And then we also for the salon, we have Adorn Salon and Spa on Facebook and Adorn Cincinnati on Instagram. And then Mandy also is at what? It's Experience Embellish. Experience Embellish on Instagram, Instagram and, and if Facebook. You are not already following her. She's a great one to watch. Um, she's killing it with her salon. And we hope that you had a great day with us today. And we hope you have a great rest of the day. And we can't wait to see you in Vegas for the big event. Thanks so much. Have a great day.